Hi, by the end of this video, I hope to show you how you can combat anxiety quite significantly by growing and developing a network in the brain called the task positive network. Let's take a look. If you remember from the last video, in the anxious brain, there's overactivity in a network called the default mode network, which ends up bombarding the frontal cortex with persistent, depressing and anxious thoughts and feelings. Basically what happens is an overactive amygdala kicks off scary and pleasant feelings, it gains momentum with distressing and anxious specific memories and past experiences through the hippocampus. This is relayed via a processing center and then bombards your cortex. The good news is there's an alternative network called the task positive network. These are the main structures of the task positive network. If you activate and connect together networks in the brain, they grow and develop. It's called neuroplasticity. The brain can be made to rewire itself. When you exercise a part of the brain with intensity and regularity, it causes the neurons in that area to grow more dense connections between them. Over a period of time, 50 hours, you can grow and develop a significant change in the brain I call this self-directed neuroplasticity. It's the new exciting frontier in uh, treating anxiety conditions. To grow and develop the task positive network, we want to engage the insula. For successful results, you want to activate and engage every part of the TPN. However, the insula does stand out because part of its function is the switching between the TPN and the DPN that we're trying to switch off. We activate and engage our insula when we focus on perceiving body sensations. So for example, when you focus on your breathing, you're activating the insula. That's of course a classic style of meditation called the mindfulness of breathing meditation. But now with neuroscience, we can understand the, the other parts of the task positive network and we can draw in other elements from different meditation systems to design for the first time meditation systems that are uh, sort of precisely designed to treat specific mental health problems. So we activate the insula when we focus on um, uh, the perception of our breathing, when we focus on the feeling of our heartbeat our gut feelings, and also our hearing. And these are gonna be the, some of the main components that we hold our focus on during this meditation. The next, very next video after this, I'm gonna give you a, gu a guidance through this. In the meditation brain exercise, to activate the entire TPN, we want to include the sense of touch on our skin, because that activates the somatosensory cortex. Another structure of the task positive network is the anterior cingulate cortex. It's actually believed that changing the ACC, the anterior cingulate cortex, may be the main reason why meditation helps anxiety. The ACC is involved in self-referencing, so looking at yourself, particularly in social contexts, so with social anxiety, how well did you do? The ACC is also involved in effortful control. So this style of meditation is not like that kind of relaxing, passive meditation. We are trying to grow and strengthen these structures as quickly as possible. We want to give them the maximum workout. The ACC is involved in hyper-focus and also refocusing. In meditation, you spend a lot of time losing focus and then regaining it and losing and regaining. So you, your mind drifts off thinking of something else and you think, oh no, I'm supposed to be meditating, bring myself back to the breathing. Every time you do that, you're engaging the ACC and giving it a workout. And you wanna do that with the maximum energy and sort of intensity that you can. The final part of the task positive network is the lateral prefrontal cortex. That should be an L, not an I. The lateral prefrontal cortex is involved in choosing what the mind pays attention to. So we're gonna to choose to pay attention to our breathing, hearing, and sense of touch on our skin. The LPFC is also very much involved in engaging and focusing on being absorbed in what we're doing right here, right now. This is a big part of mindfulness, being absorbed in the here and now. How useful would it be to help you combat your anxiety if you could be more in the present moment, less 
worrying about and anticipating what could go wrong in the future and then drawing up things that have gone wrong in the past, projecting them into the future and just in a uh, frazzled brain with anxiety. Strengthening this LPFC also helps with conditions like uh, attention deficit disorder, focus control, executive function, and so forth. So what we'll be doing in the next video is choosing to focus on one sensation at a time. So we'll spend a minute, say, focusing on our perception of breathing, linking the lateral prefrontal cortex with the insula. If our mind wanders off, we'll use the ACC to draw it back. So we're starting to grow, strengthen this, strengthen this, and growing connections. We'll bring in our sense of touch, and then if refocus and touch and refocus again. And then we'll multitask the sense of touch and our breathing. And then we'll spend a minute listening to the sounds around us, coming through another network, refocus that one. So you're just growing and strengthening networks all the time, Every minute you do it, it's quite a nice thought actually, every single minute you're doing the meditation, just remember that you're actually growing connections. After about 50 hours of doing this, you could expect to diminish your anxiety by, what well, I always say about a third. In my practice, my observation is people will reduce their anxiety from somewhere between 25% all the way up to 50%. I was reading a study just recently that achieved a uh, it was 39% average reduction in anxiety after several months of work. So it's well worth doing. I want to impress something upon you and that is that if you have an anxiety condition or any other mental health problem, I have never seen one single treatment that was like a knockout blow and just got rid of the thing. What you have to do to overcome a mental health problem is approach it from different angles. This is a good angle. This can take away maybe, let's say, a third. And then you could bring in some other work. There's diet, there's exercise, there's you know, cognitive behavioral therapy and other types of psychotherapy and so forth. Before moving on to the next video where I give you a guided meditation for how to do this, let's recap the important key points. Firstly, to grow a brain network, we exercise it. All we have to do is exercise it. We can actually grow and develop the TPN to combat anxiety. To exercise the TPN, what we're going to do is concentrate with all of our might on the sensations in our body, our skin, and the sounds around us. We're going to do this with hyper-focus. Oh, and yeah, I should add that we do this, where you're going to choose to hold your mind in the here and now. If you do this for 50 hours, you can expect to achieve significant reductions in your anxiety in three to six months. If you want to catch that next video, check out my, uh, subscribe to my channel. And if you click the notifications bell, you might not have used that before, you get uh, automatic updates. If you want to read more and check out my meditation classes, have a look at my website, petersmithuk.com. So if you'd like to get started straight away, click on the card and go straight to the next video, and I'll guide you through this technique. Thanks for watching.